when someone has COVID infection in pregnancy and they're not delivered because some people get it in the third trimester, which requires delivery, which is not uncommon. Um, you know, earlier on in pregnancy, how should the rest of their pregnancy be managed? The first thing is that we know um, that there was a cohort study that showed that uh, having COVID infection in the second trimester is more associated with an increased risk of composite adverse obstetric outcomes like preterm labor and delivery, uh, small for gestational age, a baby, uh, and other things which is, are considered like adverse pregnancy outcomes, preeclampsia, things like that. Whereas adverse neonatal outcomes, meaning when, once a baby's born, or are more associated with third trimester infection. And that's because in a third trimester infection, uh, the patients can tend to get more sick, which would require an earlier delivery, which might put a preterm baby in the NICU where those uh, neonatal outcomes could be uh, more severe. So that's the kind of the difference between uh, first, sorry, second and third trimester uh, outcomes. We don't have as much information, although I see some studies coming up the pipeline about exposure in the first trimester, unfortunately. So I'm sorry that I don't have a whole lot about that. If you get COVID infection in pregnancy, it's, a, it's, idea, it's not really a recommendation, but what most of us are doing is recommending a detailed um, uh, anatomy scan. You know how you go to 18, 20 weeks to get your anatomy scan. Most of it, if the patient's uncomplicated or has no risk factors, they'll get a basic anatomy. If they're advanced maternal age, if they have diabetes, if they have certain medical complications or medication exposure, they'll get a detailed ultrasound and a fetal echo, which is a more detailed uh, assessment of the fetal heart. So if COVID infection is uh, present, if they've had COVID infection uh, in pregnancy, it is recommended to or advised to potentially consider getting a detailed ultrasound, um, uh, especially after first trimester infection. Uh, a growth scan is also recommended if you get infection in the first or second trimester. Uh, and getting a growth scan in the third trimester just to make sure the baby is growing okay uh, and to assess for any signs of the baby being or having fetal growth restriction. So that's also recommended. As far as, and that, that growth skin can be around 30 to 32 weeks. Uh, also, there, there is some evidence that we do have that having COVID infection in pregnancy increases the risk of stillbirth. Any of these things that we're seeing, I just wanna say, are not seen to the, degree, to, to the degree, same degree in the vaccinated pregnant individuals as it is being seen in the unvaccinated. Most of the data we have are unvaccinated, but that's because we're not seeing this like we are in the unvaccinated, in those who are vaccinated. The stillbirth, the adverse pregnancy outcomes, the growth restriction, the preeclampsia, all that, we're not seeing it to the degree that we're seeing it in the unvaccinated and those individuals who are vaccinated and or boosted. So regarding the risk of increased risk of stillbirth, um, there is some uh, thought as to whether or not we should start antenatal testing or NSTs or anything like that. The current practice is to do it for routine obstetric uh, indications, meaning if you have diabetes, high blood pressure, preeclampsia, or another medical complication of pregnancy that requires that you get uh, um, antenatal, what we call antenatal surveillance in the form of BPPs, NSTs, or other form of antenatal surveillance, and then you do it, but not specifically for, because uh, there was COVID infection in pregnancy. Uh, the other thing is this whole thing about putting people on baby aspirin after COVID infection in pregnancy, or even blood thinners. There is nothing that supports that at all. In fact, there was just a recent study, it wasn't specifically on pregnancy, where putting people on after COVID infection once they were discharged from the hospital or keeping them on any kind of what we consider a blood thinner uh, was not, uh, did not uh, give them any benefit. So where I practice, we've never done that uh, for those who had COVID infection in pregnancy, putting them on baby aspirin or a blood thinner. So there is no recommendation from ACOG or, or SMFM to do so. So if you've had COVID infection in pregnancy and your provider is recommending that, Make sure you talk about why, and if it's beneficial, what the evidence shows, which it doesn't show anything, it's your question, uh, before you start uh, taking a baby aspirin or even a blood thinner. What, what about where you're at? Do they typically do that after COVID infection and pregnancy? No, no. Yeah. And I haven't had anyone ask for that. Um, yeah. But again, I think that we are casting a large net in this live. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it may be something that you have heard about or mm -hmm. you spoke with someone. Oh, I've heard a lot about it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of and you know, there's. Yeah, so that we do not do it. And I don't, I haven't encountered any evidence that supports it. Okay, let's get into the whole placenta thing. Uh, so what we know about COVID is it affects the placenta uh, and it causes something uh, called uh, SARS-CoV-2 placentitis. And I won't go through all the histo histological changes that it, it causes in the placenta, but there's a three specific findings that you can find on a placenta that's been affected by COVID infection. The difference or the unique thing about COVID infection in pregnancy is that 
It does not have to infect the fetus to cause adverse pregnancy outcomes or stillbirth. It just causes this by what it does to the placenta. So this is the only viral infection in pregnancy that does that. CMV, HSV, all these other viral infections we have in pregnancy actually directly <coughs> infect the fetus and cause the pregnancy out adverse pregnancy outcomes and stillbirth and other adverse effects of the pregnancy by infecting the placenta. That is not the case with COVID. It targets the placenta. And actually the vertical transmission, meaning from the pregnant individual through the placenta into the fetus is actually very, very, very rare. That hardly ever happens. The cases of stillbirth and other things in pregnancy are happening because of what it does on the placenta. So what happens is because of its, uh, what it does to the placenta and the specific cells that it affects, which is the syncytial trophoblast, again, I won't go through, through the whole histology of the placenta, is why it causes such uh, adverse uh, effects on the placenta. What it does is it, it can cause placental insufficiency, where you know, if you think about the placenta, the placenta is a mass of vessels, mass of vessels, small vessels. And what it does is it causes something called placental ins insufficiency, where the exchange of oxygen and nutrients from the maternal circulation through the placenta to the fetus can be significantly impaired. Placental insufficiency over time can lead to growth abnormalities of the baby or the, or the fetus. It can cause stillbirth. Um, it can cause, uh, if, if a, a neonate is born, uh, after having uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, 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 COVID placentitis, it can cause something called hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, which can affect the neurologic system of the fetus. So that's how uh, COVID placentitis after COVID infection in pregnancy is uh, exerting its effects on the fetus and causing these adverse pregnancy outcomes and um, uh, uh, stillbirth. It does not happen to every person that gets COVID infection. We don't know why it happens in some placentas and it doesn't happen in others. The other thing is that because of its effect on the small vessels in the placenta, it can increase your risk for uh, preeclampsia later in the pregnancy. So if you have first or second trimester infection, you are at increased risk for having uh, 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 preeclampsia later in the pregnancy. So that's something to watch out for if you have had COVID infection. Now, the whole thing about uh, why uh, vaccine, people that have been vaccinated uh, uh, don't have these, we don't see these, this, the, these adverse effects like stillbirth and other things um, like we do in the unvaccinated is because the whole thing about the vaccine is it, what we see is it de decreases what we call viremia, the presence of the virus in the bloodstream. The higher the viremia level in a pregnant individual, uh, the more likely it is to affect the placenta. The vaccine helps to decrease the risk of viremia and severe illness which decreases the risk of the virus attacking the placenta. So that's why we think from everything that we're seeing that we're not seeing it in, in those who are vaccinated. So there is science behind why getting vaccinated in pregnancy helps to prevent that from happening. SARS-CoV-2 placentitis or COVID placentitis may not have an immediate effect on the placenta. This can happen weeks down the road. Okay, so it's something to consider. It just doesn't happen all of a sudden. So getting vaccinated as early as you can or when it's indicated is ideal, not only to protect the pregnant individual from getting severe disease, but to also to protect that placenta. Uh, this, this uh, and I love the placenta, so I kind of read a lot about this, but what it's doing to the placenta is not been seen before with any viral infection in pregnancy, any viral infection in pregnancy. It is completely unique. And the fact that it can cause stillbirth without having ever touched the fetus is also unique. And it's also a little scary, I'll, I'll admit it is, because you can't see that on ultrasound. It's not like I could do an ultrasound in your placenta and say, oh, you have SARS-CoV-2 placentitis. That is a diagnosis that's made, that's made after the placenta is out of your body, whether it be from a delivery where the baby was survived and was fine, or there's a stillbirth. So that's why it's really important to know what this virus can do to the placenta. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, really intriguing to me, and I, I can't wait to see what else we kind of tease out to see if there's going to be any way we can prevent that from happening. As of now, we just don't have any way to do that. <laughs> I me. feel like we should be telling everyone, pl protect your placenta. Protect your placenta. <laughs> can we make this the hashtag protect your placenta uh, <laughs> live, right? But that's essentially what you're what we're doing. Uh, I mean, it's it's incredible what this uh, virus can do. And I did. I'm not trying to scare everybody. You, if you've gotten a COVID infection in pregnancy, it doesn't mean it's going to happen to everybody. But unfortunately, for those that it does, 
the outcomes can be very severe. Um, so we have multiple reasons to get vaccinated in pregnancy. This is adding to another one. Obviously, to protect pregnant individual, we know what code infection can do in, a preg in pregnancy. We, now we know what we can, it can do to the placenta. So do you include that in your counseling at all about um, the getting the vaccine in pregnancy? Well, you know, the thing is, knowledge is power. So yeah. everything is on the table. When we're really counseling our patients and really informing them about COVID, you know, I think one of the takeaways from today, especially for our audience, is protect your placenta. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's bottom line, you know, protect your placenta, get vaccinated, make sure you have the best possible outcome for you and your baby. That's what we want to encourage and support. And if I had to look at my crystal ball, and there's some evidence that's kind of coming out, trickling out is, you know, we're not, thankfully, not seeing the catastrophic, uh, catastrophic effects of COVID, vac COVID uh, infection in pregnancy, like the ICU admissions, like uh, the destruction of the lungs and all of this, we're not seeing that as much. Where this is gonna go into is what it does to the placenta and the long-term outcomes of that for the pregnancy and then even after. So I think that's where we're at. That's where our money is right now is getting as much information as we can on what it does to placenta because it's not going away. COVID is not mm -hmm. gonna go away. So yeah. having COVID infection in pregnancy is always going to be an issue. It is. Uh, so we have to protect the placenta. I like that hashtag. I think we need to tell ACOG we need to start using that. And I'll give you all the credit. And besides, I can't steal it from you because we have it on recording. So I, it, it's yours. It's yours. So yeah, we'll, or we can do it together. But yeah, protect your placenta because it's it's a real threat. And again, we're not seeing the, the SARS-CoV-2 placentitis and the outcomes of that in our vaccinated individuals. Uh, so again, get vaccinated and please protect your placenta, if not anything else. Yeah. I okay. think that sums it up. <laughs> yeah, I was going to answer some questions, but I don't, um, we don't have time. I know you got to get back to a meeting. So mm -hmm. uh, if you have questions, you can either DM me or put it underneath uh, the Instagram post about the live today, or actually I'm getting ready to post this video and you can put it under there and uh, I'll try to get those questions answered in the comments. Um, but again, thank you so much for taking your time out to do this. This was very thank helpful. You. Really, and, really and maybe we can just do another one where we can answer the questions. Um, you know, oh, again, just do like a random one. Yeah. And just have yeah. people answer questions, uh, some questions. Yeah, we can do that. Absolutely. That would be awesome. but, ne but next time, make sure you use your phone. <laughs> yes. Yes. Sorry, everyone. I, I'm new to this. So, <laughs> That's you know, okay. yeah. it happens. It happens. Now, you know, you'll never, we'll never have to go through that again. <laughs> Never. All but right. thank you for thank having me. And yes. this was such a wonderful conversation mm -hmm. that's so informative and it will help, hopefully, help so many protect their I placenta. So. <laughs> protect your placenta. Thank you so much. And we'll get in contact All right. soon. All righty. Bye-bye.